So, Obed and I are doing the team preaching for today. Uh, we've been thinking about how we're going to do this. And so we decided to kind of do something a little, uh, a little unique, uh, a little different. Um, so I was going to, we were going to sort of interview each other, okay? Um, as you guys know, Obed's going to leave here pretty soon, and this is my chance. This is our chance to uh, maybe get to know Obed a little bit more, maybe learn some things that perhaps you didn't know uh, before he leaves us. And then he's, I guess, going to do kind of the same thing for me. Yes. So, uh, so we're going we're gonna to ask each other questions. And then feel free, you know, if you want, if you want to interject with a question here and there, then, you know, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty informal. You have a problem with that, Obed? Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, All right. So, um, so I was going to go ahead and get things started. I was going to interview Obed first, All right. uh, and I wasn't sure how I was going to approach this, uh, but uh, I, I decided to approach it like as if, um, you know, maybe if I'm like out on a first date or something and I'm trying to get to know a girl, I'll ask him some questions that perhaps help me get to know them a little bit, okay? So these are some get to know you questions okay. that I'm going to ask you, All just right. to get us started. This is just to... This is just to break the ice a little bit. Okay. Okay. So we'll start slow and then we'll start to get a little more, a little deeper. Okay. So first question, Obed. Okay. Who is your favorite historical figure? Ooh, uh, Einstein, definitely. Um, he really helped us unravel the secrets of the universe, in my opinion, and has definitely set us on the path to um, uh, understand space, if that makes sense. And it, I think it's something that um, is really close to God's heart. Some people say that God is a mathematician. Hmm. And so, um, yeah, definitely Einstein. Okay, Einstein. Okay, that's good. That's a pretty good one. Not Jesus. <laughs> okay, I was just kidding. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. All right. That all wouldn't right. count anyway. Okay. Uh, next question. Do you, uh, do you wish to get married? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah? That's a yes. Okay. Um, um, you know, Ellen G. White says that the greatest job you can ever have is being a parent. So that's really dear to me. So, uh, yeah, definitely okay. help you get married. Okay. Well, uh, you know, sometimes God calls us just to be like Apostle Paul, right? Yes. So that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Um, yeah. So, okay, so if you wish to get married, then how many children do you want to have? Uh, not four, so I don't think I can be an elder. But um, <laughs> What? Not four, so I can't be an elder at LWF. Is that, are you pointing at, are you I mean, trying to get something at me? I think that's a requirement. Am I wrong? Well, is that a right. requirement? Okay. All right. Um, so okay. All maybe right. three. I think three. So three? Yeah, that's a good number. You like three? Okay. Yeah. So like boy, girl, boy, or girl, girl, um, girl? Up, up, up or to God. I'm cool with whatever. Just whatever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Girl, girl, girl. Oh. As a father. Girl, oh, girl, girl. Maybe not girl, girl, girl. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe not all okay. girls. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. It's going to start to get a little tougher now, okay? Okay. So how much does someone have to pay you to eat a live spider? Um, a lot. Um, so there is an amount. Yeah, there's definitely that an amount. You'd, yeah? Depends on the spider, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah. So okay. I mean, if it's not venomous and it's small, maybe a million. That's not a bad. million? Yeah. I mean, okay. It's not, All right. it's not a big deal. Um, if you had to change your name... What would your new name be, and why would you choose that name? Ooh, I've never thought about that. Um, uh, maybe a James, solid name. James. Yeah, James or Santiago. That's James in Spanish. It's pretty cool. Santiago. Santiago is James in Spanish. I did not know that. I know, right? It doesn't sound Usually like Usually in Spanish, it sounds sort of similar, but that's totally different. Yeah. Okay. So James. So James, James Gala. That's oh yeah, that doesn't sound bad. What's yeah. James Bond gala? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, oh, here's a good one. <clears throat> Would you rather trade some intelligence for looks or looks for intelligence? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty I'm content. Sorry? I'm okay with, with where I'm at. No trading. Um, no trade. If I had to, if I had to, definitely looks for intelligence. Definitely value that more. So. You'd give up looks to get more intelligence. If I had to trade, yeah. 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 
You know, this is a like, no-win answer. Yeah, because yeah, you're basically yeah, saying you yeah. you got too much good looks, so no, like you want to no, give some of that away I'm to get some talent. That's basically I'm what you're saying. I'm just saying what I value. I'm just saying what. Oh, I okay. Because if you said you want to trade intelligence, then you'd be like, you're too smart. So like, you know, you need. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so speaking of looks, what is your best physical feature? Oh, what means? I don't know. Um... It's a good question. Maybe just nose. Nose. I don't really think about that. Okay. So just go with nose. Just right, right smack dab in the middle. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, who, oh, here's a good one. Who is your favorite Disney princess and why? Oh, um, Belle. Just because it's an awesome movie, Beauty and the Beast. So um, I, I watched that one a lot. Um, why? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really seen the other princess movies that much, really. Okay, so. all right. So you like the smart type, the smart, pretty type. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, do you like to sing? I do, I do enjoy that. Yeah. You do like to sing, yeah. okay. And do you like to dance? I can't dance, so no. You I mean, cannot dance? No, I cannot dance, okay. so that's, that's a okay. no. Right. That's a no. So you don't dance? I, I wish, no. Okay. I do not. All right. Aren't you uh, Panamanian? Yeah. Like, are, isn't there like, don't you get, uh, yeah. You know, like you have the, the the rhythm or the hips or something like Maybe that. Maybe skipped me, skip my generation. Skipped you, okay. I don't know. All we'll, right, we'll find out. Okay, last one. What is your most embarrassing moment? Oh, I try not to think about that. Don't say that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know, just saying stupid stuff. I guess. Okay. I don't know. Okay. All right. Generic. So now that we've broken the ice, um, okay. I wanted to ask you some things about, about your life. Uh, you know, when I first met you, that was close to 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, you definitely. were in high school then. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you, finished, uh, you finished college mm -hmm. and, um, and you're getting ready to go to dental school. So I was wondering if you don't mind kind of sharing with us how God led you on your journey from, from high school to where you are now. Yeah, definitely. So um, for me, that um, that journey really began um, back in elementary. <clears throat> I was pretty uh, just all in for pre-med ever since elementary. I'm not sure why. Um, lots of my classmates were also doing the same thing. And I guess we just really bonded. And we were kind of all in the same boat wanting to do that. And we were, um, we were all um, passionate about that. Um, I, I was hospitalized when I was in seventh grade, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but when I came to Andrews Academy, I walked into the principal's office with my mom, and the deal was that if they would not allow me to graduate in three years, that then she would take me to public school and I could do public school. And so we sat down with the principal, and you know he talked to us. Uh, he told us that they don't offer that degree, and that you know they can only do a four-year degree. So I thought I was going to be in. Uh, enrolled into public school, but my mom didn't do that. She just left me there at Andrews Academy. Um, so, I mean, yeah. So I did four years with my friends there, and I was in the pre-med track. Um, and then my senior year, I had the opportunity to take um, college courses here at Andrews because of the, it's like a joint program. And so I took uh, G-Chem and uh, general chemistry and general physics, and, you know, I did well. I really enjoyed that. And that set me on a track to do um, a biochemistry degree. And, you know, at, at that point, graduating high school and coming into college is when I was going through a lot of, well, it's when a lot of my struggles in life really began. Um, it was at that time that, um, you know, disclaimer, you know, I, I love my family and, and I'm really content with where I am in my life and where God has brought me. So I just want to say that before I continue, um, because at that time, um, my parents were um, having some issues in their marriage, you know, and it was getting pretty serious. And so as I started to attend Andrews my freshman year, that started to affect my academics. And one of the bigger issues was just simply um, finances. Um, uh, you know, I'm not certain what our finances were at, but they must have been tight because um, deciding whether or not I should go to Andrews was definitely on the table. And so, um, you know, my parents tried to um, pay for that, but it was really difficult for them. And so that was really affecting me, knowing that perhaps 
uh, my journey would come to an end here, that that may be the, um, you know, the end for my dreams of being a physician and stuff like that. So I really struggled in school. Uh, I wouldn't skip my classes or anything like that. I was attending my classes and, um, you know, it was mostly just the after school, just trying to stay focused and studying or doing some of my reports and stuff like that, that um, really affected me. Um, and so my first semester didn't go too well. And then my second semester, because um, my finances, I had to drop my credits. So I didn't do a full load. I did like um, eight or nine credits. Um, and so that, that was that. Um, I was so naive back then that I took on um, two student worker jobs and you know worked as many hours as I could, thinking that it could somehow um, make a difference. And so I did that. And um, after my freshman year, I, I couldn't come back to Andrews. So then um, my mother, she enrolled me into um, LMC. And you know, at that time, I was already so bothered by how I was performing at school that I just really thought to myself, I don't want to keep doing this. I just want to do something that I know I can succeed in or, you know, I just want to work full time, just get a job and do that. But my mom, she really wanted me to stay in school. So that's what I did. I did LMC and, um, you know, sure enough, I just repeated the same uh, results. I just didn't do well and um, did that for a year. So that was my sophomore year. And at the end of that, I just decided that uh, I was done with that. Uh, I was going to just work full time and um, had enough of, um, you know, failing, I guess, you know, um, not failing so much, but that struggle of of wanting to succeed, but failing, I suppose. So that was sort of the end of your sort of your medical school dreams or that or your, yes. go your goals. Yes, exactly. And so I did that. Um, and then at that, that same summer, my parents um, separate and start filing for their divorce papers. Um, and so at the time, um, it was just me, my brothers and my mom. And so um, it was perfect timing because I got to work full time. I got to help my mother um, just pay for the bills around the house and that sort of thing. And um, I believe my younger brother was also, had also just graduated that year. And so he was coming into college. And so, you know, the timing was perfect. I was able to help him pay for school and help him put him through um, college, and so um, I started then. Uh, I was really blessed because, uh, sure enough, um, Dr. Drew is here in the audience, and you know, um, I was able to work with him. Um, being here at, at Living Word Fellowship gave me the opportunity to um, know someone that was able to offer me a job, and so I did that. Um, I worked as a medical assistant um, for about six months, and uh, that was really good for me. It gave me an opportunity to um, to grow and to learn a lot and to struggle. I think that was probably the best part. You know, we, we um, rarely grow without resistance or struggle and rarely is growth um, free of pain, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's just the reality of life and it's a good reality. I think that uh, God places a lot of our blessings on the other side of that growth or, or pain and struggles. So um, I did that, then afterwards I had the, um, after that working there for six months, I, I I, I started working for Ryan at the dental lab, and so that was another blessing. I did that for um, about 18 months, um, but about seven months in, I had to make the decision of whether or not I wanted to stay on and work as a uh, dental technician and pursue a career as a dental technician, um, or go back to school or do something else. And so that was a, a really important time for me because by then, I had gained enough experience and definitely confidence, not just in myself, um, but in God. And my relationship with God had um, really grown to a point where it was um, completely independent of my parents and it was my own personal relationship. And I could rely on him as, as not just my own savior, but my own, um, just God in general, you know? Um, he, was, he was real to me and, um, and so, you know, at that point, I had to make a decision about what I wanted to do, and um, I, I was struggling because uh, medicine was still um, a dream for me, but I knew that I had a, attached a lot of um, pride and um, clamor to it, probably, and so I really needed to put that aside and just decide for myself what would be the best decision, the best um, 
position that I could be in to help others and make a difference in the world, and, and for me also. So, you know, I, I remember uh, really clearly, I was just working at the lab one day, and I just decided I need to put this all down on the table and just um, be vulnerable and open to God and just say that, you know, no matter what you pick for me, um, no matter what is best for me, I want to pursue that, even if it means never doing medicine or whatever the case may be. And so I just decided, you know, whether it's school or dental technician or whatever career, I'm going to do it. And it was at that moment when I really let go of everything, and I was making that prayer, sitting there at my bench, that it really occurred to me for the first time that, you know, why don't you do dentistry, you know? And so um, ever since then, ever since that prayer was answered, I've been on track for dentistry, you know? I came back to school, emailed my professor, um, scheduled a plan to do classes, um, came back, um, you know, worked part-time, uh, full-time school, and I did that, and um, here I am, so it's been good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Obed. You know, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there's things about you that I've learned, um, and uh, all this stuff. You know, I had no clue. You know, all I see is this dependable guy that's here every mm -hmm. Sabbath, helping to set up to make sure we have a good service, uh, sort of the backbone of our service. And you know, without fail, you are always there for, for the church. You are always there for us. You're always there to help. You know, whatever is needed. I mean, not just here at, at the service, but you know, whatever programs were going on, you're always there to help, whether it's physically or just to be supportive or whatever. So it just kind of boggles my mind that you know you're going through a lot of personal struggles. You know, mm -hmm. outside of church. You know, just you know in your personal life through school and all this, and then you know even this. The you know about you know, kind of having your dreams sort of squashed a little bit. Mm. Uh, despite all that, you're still dependable. Mm. You know, so what, you know, what motivated you to continue to stay, you know, uh, dependable for the church? Yeah, I got to admit, if, if it were me, I would just be like, I got enough problems in my life. I don't need an extra, you know, an extra burden. You know, so what, how, how did you, how did that come about? How did that happen? Uh, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, I'm not sure I fully um, understand the answer to that either. Um, I just know that um, from a younger age, from a pretty young age, I had a pretty strong relationship with God. Uh, and maybe it was just moving out here to Michigan that kind of helped foster that. Because when I was 12, I got baptized. And um, probably a few months after that, I moved out to Michigan. And so coming out here, um, I had the opportunity to just uh, be independent and kind of attend whatever church I wanted to and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I was attending PMC um, on Sabbaths, helping out there, you know, leading out in Sabbath school. And I think it was that journey where I had to, not had to, but where I was independent and was just growing my relationship with God in such a way that um, it was very personal that it never really occurred to me later on that, um, that oh, I'm just going to walk away from this or, you know, that, that, that was really an option to say, I'm just going to give up on um, helping out church, you know, because for me it, it meant something different than that. It wasn't always just a, a you know, a, a task, you know. Um, it was an opportunity to do something that I could do, which is serve, you know. I never, never I didn't see myself as a, like a pastor or something of that sort. So for me, serving was a way of, um, I guess, expressing my relationship um, that I had with God. So, um, yeah, I think that was mostly it. So, so, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit. So, it sounds like perhaps uh, what you, your service to the church was perhaps one of the factors that kind of helped get you out of your slump, maybe. Hmm. I mean, is that, would that be accurate to say that, yeah, you think? Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right. Um, so, so, and by the way, Obed, you know, speaking as someone that's gone to medical school and, and, and gone through all that, um, I mean, it's not that big a deal, you know, honestly. Uh, you know, probably, I would say, like, half of all my classmates, they, they're like, I wish I had gone, done dentistry, you know. <laughs> you know, it's just, that's just a reality. Um, and I'm, I'm, I personally am, am happy with how things went. I mean, it was sure. a struggle. Uh, and, and God brought me here. 
Uh, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly not a knock on you. Uh, I mean, God has a plan, and, you know, he had to kind of, I guess, lead you in, mm. in, through difficult times to get there, but, but you did. And, and, you know, Obed, and let me brag for Obed a little bit. Mm. Um, uh, you know, he, he doesn't know I'm going to say this, but, um, you know, Obed is a really, really intelligent guy. He, he's mm. capable of anything, mm. you know, depending on life circumstances, he absolutely could have done whatever. Um, you know, but in the end, God has a plan for us. And so no matter what our abilities, no matter what blessings God gives us, um, we're still always going to be happiest when we stay within God's plan for our lives. And, you know, despite your struggles, despite everything you've been through, you got through it and you got back on the dentistry track. Um, you took your DATs and, and I know that um, so Obed, Obed uh, actually scored very high on his DATs. He, he scored in the point, top 0.1%, not 1%, top 0.1% of the nation on his DATs. So anyone who can do that, you know, you know is capable of anything. Um, and, and so I know God blessed you. I know God helped you. Praise God. Yeah. Um, and uh, so because of all this, I, I know that, you know, despite your financial struggles, you're, you're getting, you know, uh, some pretty generous scholarships uh, based on you know based on your scores and and despite despite their struggles with your grades and all that you know God helped you through right so yeah. so I, I praise God and I and I thank you for sharing that um, and you're you're going to be leaving soon I think in a couple of weeks so I was wondering if maybe there's something you want to share with with the church uh, just you know before you leave in the next couple of weeks. Is there something that you want to kind of get off your chest hmm. uh, to, tell your, to tell your church family? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, I chose a verse, if you can pull that up now, is uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, so this is one of my favorite verses. We all know this verse. Uh, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And so um, I really believe that God is in the business of changing lives. And that's his, um, that's his career choice, and that's what he likes to do. Um, and, you know, this verse, uh, we often focus on the plans to prosper you, and we focus on the hope and the future, but very rarely do we focus on that middle portion and not to harm you. And I think that's one of the most powerful parts of this verse, because God is explicitly saying that no matter what happens to you, no matter what it feels like or seems like, no matter how evil or painful the situation or the, the outlook may look, that he indeed has a plan to prosper you and that he's not trying to hurt you and that what's going to happen isn't um, to, to somehow, you know, do something mean to you. And I think that um, that's really important for us because, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, growth and, um, you know, just succeeding, what we... Uh, think of as success uh, is very dependent on our struggles and I guess struggling and resistance and pushing through that and um, you know we we want to prosper and we want to have a hope in the future uh, but God is telling us you know that he's going to have to refine us he's going to have to um, uh, work with us but ultimately uh, like Joshua 1 9 says that he has commanded us to be courageous and he will give us a strength so he has, he has given us everything that we need, um, you know, and this is, these are promises that he gives us to kind of wrap that up, to, to let us know that uh, we just need to have hope in him, believe in him, and not, not to be afraid, uh, and no matter what it looks like, you know. He, his plan may, may encompass some of the, the, the worst looking uh, outcomes, but ultimately, um, you know, he, he has already won the victory. So I think I definitely just want to share that um, so yeah. All right, and and I think David actually had a question. I do. Uh, Obed, have you read the book The Five Love Languages? And is your primary love language service? I think it may be. I think it may be. Yes. I, I'm not sure if I've read that book, but yeah, definitely. So. It shows. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, yeah, I've been really grateful um, being here at Living Word Fellowship. Um, you know, 
Peter on, he really watched out for me. I remember at some point I was out here in the front, and I guess he, he thought I wasn't uh, doing as well, that he could use me otherwise. So he just pulled me out from praise team and everything up here, and he just put me into doing AV and you know, uh, turned me into a deacon. So I've been really blessed here, the opportunity to serve and to just express myself. So, yeah, Thanks. thank you. All right. So now we're going to uh, switch over to Brian. So this will be exciting. I wish I had more uh, fun questions to ask you. We I might didn't... run out of time soon. <laughs> OK, well, OK. Well. All right. So um, just in case all of us are not um, uh, too familiar with. You got a uh, book over here? A book? No, I just got some questions. I just got some questions. Okay. Um, so yeah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, you know? How many kids you have, or where you grew up, maybe, and uh, what did you do for a living? Just for us to give us an idea. Yeah, uh, I I was born uh, near Chicago. I'm a son of immigrant parents. They immigrated from Korea. I, I was born near Chicago, northern nor, north of Chicago, uh, and uh, I grew up in Florida. Um, eventually, came to Andrews for undergrad. Went to med school in Loma Linda, and now I'm a radiation oncologist. I'm married. I have four children, four boys. Uh, who I love, and yep, that's me. Awesome, thank you. All right, so I don't have as many fun questions, but I do have a couple. Do you have any phobias, Brian? Do I have any phobias? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, you know, that's a kind of a moving target a little bit, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, there's lots, I'm sure. The only that just, the one that just kind of comes to my mind at this very second is, uh, you know, I remember when I was young, um, you know, we grew up in Florida. There's a lot of, like, little pests, like roaches and spiders and all that. And, and uh, I don't know if it's genetic, but my mom freaks out with bugs. Ooh. Like, she's the type that, the little tiny, and then she has to stand up on uh, a chair to, like, you know. And so she would make me, you know, like, five-year-old kid, go get that, you know. And, <laughs> and, but then I'm just as scared, too. So, like, I didn't want to... And, and uh, but eventually, you know, with time, you just had I just had to like get over it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it wouldn't be good, right? Someone has to to take care of that. So so yeah, eventually, and plus, you know, as the as the male gender, you have that pressure, like you have to get over it. So I yeah. I kind of kind of did. So, but I still have a little bit, a little bit of that. I think it's genetic. Genetic. <laughs> okay. Um, so. What do you wish your brain was better at doing? What do I wish? Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of things. Uh, I think, I know I'm going to get this wrong. What's the, what's the creative side that's, that's right brain, right? Uh, Actually, I think they, that was uh, defunct. There's, there's no... Oh, okay, whatever. Right. But, the, yeah. but the, the saying is right brain people are... So I wish I, wish I was more... I wish I had developed my creative side mm -hmm. a bit more. Um, you know, I, I feel like there, there's something there, but it was just never developed because I was just too focused on, you know academics and memorizing things and mm. you know the thing about <sighs> growing up I did what I needed to do to get what I wanted to get mm. and so that required memorizing a whole list of things to get a certain grade or whatever like this but the problem is I would learn it I would learn it quickly and well enough to to, to perform on the test and get a grade but then I would quickly just as quickly forget it mm. so in the end I have nothing <laughs> it's, you know so uh, so yeah, I wish there was a little bit more balance. Awesome. If you had to ask. Um, I'll just ask one more quick one here. Um, so they say that everyone has a book in them. Um, if you were to write a book, what would it be about? Uh, what would it be about? Something uh, you're passionate or you want to share about in a book? In a book. Like, like a fictional story? No, no, it can be about just some sort of life lesson or some philosophy that you believe. Oh. Uh, I guess I would say that 
uh, growing up, one of my themes uh, is one of my themes is to basically never give up. Hmm. Okay, that's that's like my thing. <laughs> uh, that's you know by the grace of God, I am here where I am now because of that sort of relentless um, attitude, Amen. and I feel so strongly about it that. I make it like a mantra for our family, hmm. right? So, so I think I shared with, shared with some of our men here about what I do with my children. So I've got, I've got every morning, I take them to school every morning. And so every morning we're driving and I say, okay guys, what's the golden rules? Number one. And then the golden rule, they, and then they have to tell me what the golden rules are, which is number one, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Okay, hmm. what's golden rule number two, which is, and then they say, love your neighbor as yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I've got the shin rules, okay? So the shin rules, number one is never, we never, shins don't ever give up, mm -hmm. okay? And then shin rule number two is um, uh, shins always keep their word, or in other words, never lie. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I, I make them say this to me every single morning, you know, they're kind of like, oh, I gotta say this again, you know, but yeah, I don't care. I just, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna say this to me every single morning. And then I also say like, you know, oh, love the Lord your God. So, so, so do you love the Lord your God with all, yes, yes, dad, yes. It's like, okay, are you, are you treating your brother as you would want to be treated? Yes, yes, I'm doing that. Every day, yes. So that's, yeah. Nice. Those are some good rules. Okay, um, so we're going to get to some deeper questions here. So can you tell us uh, about how you became part of Living Word Fellowship? Yeah, so uh, after I finished my residency training, mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, of course, that's when you start looking for a job. And it came down to two choices. I was either going to stay at Loma Linda as a, uh, you know, as an attending at, the, at our school, de uh, our residency department, uh, radiation department there, uh, or I was going to take a job here in the Midwest, uh, near, uh, near here, near Andrews. And, you know, back when I graduated from Andrews, I never dreamed I would come back. <laughs> I, I, I thought, I thought, winters are over for me, I'm going out to the West, Never come back here. It was nice knowing you, but you know, I don't mind if I never see you again, kind of a thing. So, so those are the two choices. Um, I actually turned down. So they, the, the group here uh, in uh, Northwest Indiana, they offered me the job. And initially, I, I said no. I turned it down, because I was going to stay at Loma Linda as an attending there. Um, and I actually, I accepted the job in Loma Linda. Uh, but then, you know, situation changed and I started to have second thoughts and uh, realized that, you know what, I think, I think coming to uh, Indiana or, or near Andrews is what I need to do. And so, you know, it was very strange. So I called back and I said, hey, uh, is that job offer still okay? I mean, we still good? And so, they, and so what they were saying is, they had interviewed a guy after I had rejected or turned down the offer. They had interviewed a guy, they liked him, and so they offered him the job, and he accepted the job, oh, wow. okay? And then, but then suddenly, I don't know exactly, but he had some health problem or something, wow. and suddenly at the last second, he had to bow out of the job. And like, within like a day, I called, like, hey, can I still have that job? And they're like, yes! Perfect, you know, and of course they're like, well, you know, we wanted you in the first place all along anyway, so, you know, whatever, that's, I don't know if that's true, but, but it, it, you know, it just, it's just interesting how it all worked out, um, yeah, definitely. and so I ended up coming here, uh, and one of the first per people I interviewed with is a guy named Dr. Chil Kang, okay, uh -huh. he's a, a part of our group, and, and I met him, and to be honest with you, Nothing really jumped out at me about him, you know. Uh, you know, they brought my partners brought him along because he. They're like, oh, you went to Andrews. This guy went to Andrews too, so let's bring him along. It's like, okay. So you know, we were talking, and 
you know, I wasn't even quite sure if he was Adventist, to be honest. You know, <laughs> you know, maybe he just went to Andrews. I don't know. Uh, but um, but I met him, and then eventually, you know, he he was like, "Hey, Brian, you know, we're we're going to start this kind of this Sabbath school group. Um, it's it's myself and and uh, and and Jay and." Uh, you remember Arlen and Kevin, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, a long time ago. And there, you know, and so we're going to start this group. And that, those, were the, those were the beginning and seeds of Living Word Fellowship at the time. You know, we didn't know at the time, but those are the seeds. So he's kind of like, hey, we, you know, we want to start this group. We'd like it if you come. And, you know, to be honest, and one thing I forgot to mention is I was married with children at the time, but I made the decision to come out here first by myself because um, the last thing I wanted is, you know, you hear horror stories about your first job, and so I wanted to make sure it was going to work out. I didn't want to uproot my entire family, and then within months, it's not working out, and then I have to uproot everyone back again. So I, I came out first on my own, and, you know, so Chill, uh, Chill was, Elder Chill was there, and, um, and, uh, and then, so, so I, you know, I, I'm grateful that, that he invited me, you know, being out here by yourself, you know, even though, even if you have a good relationship with God, uh, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, you know, honestly, I probably, um, I don't know, know where I would have gone. Uh, I don't know if I even would have gone, you know. Um, you know, you get kind of lonely a little bit, and you don't know what to do with yourself, so I don't know how things would have turned out. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I was able to um, take part in, in the beginnings of Living Word, and then just kind of watching where it is now is was uh, quite amazing. Uh, I thank God. And during all the during all that time, I, as I was I was married, but I was living you know living like a bachelor essentially. Um, you know, uh, Elder Sophia always made sure that you know I had food to take home. Um, you know, because I'm a guy, I don't really cook for myself, so I always buy things. And so she always made sure I had food. Um, and then I appreciate, I appreciate my friends uh, Kevin and Arlen and Jay, who, you know, they always had insightful things to tell me, uh, you know, whether it be from a, from a parental standpoint or just from a life standpoint. I mean, I really, I learned a lot. I was that was about ten years ago. So I mean, it doesn't seem like a long time ago, but it was t it was like almost ten years ago, and uh, the way I thought, the way I did things were totally different. And and so these are the people that touched me and. And kind of shaped how I thought, how I thought about God, how I thought about life, uh, and helped me to become who I am now, and, and and to be where I am, and and being involved in the church, and and, and all that. So I, Amen. I don't know if that answered your question. Was that the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, lo yeah. I lo forgot what your initial question was, but uh, but yeah, that's where I am now. Thank you. That's great. Um, you know. Uh, I think most of us are familiar with, uh, with your family, and uh, Isaiah, I believe, is autistic. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I was wanting to know if you could share with us what it's been like, uh, your experience in relaying love to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, you know, my journey from, from whatever, young childhood to where I am now, um, I should let me back up. So, from when I was growing up until probably about through college, I would I would say things were pretty smooth sailing for me. Hmm. Um, you know, I've I've shared this before, but basically, I was the type who did the absolute minimum I needed to do to get what I needed to get. Right. So, hmm. you know, for example, if I needed only a 90% to get an A, then I'm only getting a 90%. I'm not going to put forth any extra effort to get 91% or 92%, okay? Um, when I was in college, I knew exactly what I knew. I knew you have to get a 3.5 GPA. You need to get like a, a 30 on the MCAT, and that's it. That's all you need, right? So I studied enough to get just that grade and just that score on the MCAT. And that's exactly what I did. Now, that's not wise because you're giving yourself no margin of error. But I was so arrogant at the time that I felt like I could get away with that. And by the grace of God, I kind of did. Uh, but that did not 
prepare me for uh, some of the more difficult things, right? So once you hit med school, things start to get harder, okay? So once you're in med school or a graduate level school, whatever, you know, after undergrad, you're like in the big leagues at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you do not, there's no forgiveness for, uh, how should I say this, leaving something out on the field, right? I mean, you, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you have to put everything into it uh, or you get left behind. And so I struggled. Um, uh, you know, I think, I think part of it is, part of my attitude at the time was I wanted to prove that I could get the same equivalent score as anyone else with the least amount of effort, right? Like, hey, look at you. You're putting forth like 100% effort. I'm only putting forth 65% effort, and I'm still, mm. I wanted to do that, and, but it didn't. I mean, it didn't work out that way. Mm. And so I just kept falling farther and farther behind. Um, and, uh, and then honestly, you know, all the different, all the different uh, fields of medicine didn't really appeal to me, so I was starting to get down on myself in the sense that I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Mm. Um, so eventually I got uh, introduced to radiation oncology, but that was a super competitive field because everyone wants to do, I mean, it's, it's one of those few things where you have an eight to five job with all weekends off mm. and very little, no call right, where you never get called in the middle of the night, basically. So, of course, everyone wants to do that. And why, you know, so it's like, why would someone at my, you know, uh, you know, I'm like in the lower half of my class. Mm. Why would someone like me even have a chance at, at something like that? Because everyone wants to do that, right? And, and you know, as I was interviewing for it, uh, I find that um, basically every other person is an MD, PhD. Okay, so these are folks who not only did medical school, but they decided to stay an extra three years in medical school to get a PhD in addition to their MD, right? So, so these are the people, so like you're just really intimidated, you don't know, you know, what, you know you're like, what am I doing here? Um, and so just when, I, just when I was about to give up, God sent one of my friends, I was walking to, I was walking to the dean's office to basically give up on my uh -huh. dream uh, or, you know, what I wanted to do to tell him that, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm not going to pursue this. I'm going to go a different direction. And as I was walking in, I ran into one of my friends, and I just told, kind of poured out my heart, like, what, this is what I'm going through. And he was like, you know what? You got to do it. You know, you got to go for it because you can do it. And so that was like, that was just what I needed. Like, that's what I God sent someone to tell me exactly what I needed to hear at the right moment. Amen. And so I was like, you know what, you're right. And I'm, so, so I put everything back into it and, you know, praise God, I, I got into something that's super ultra competitive somehow, I'm not even sure how, but I was able to get into uh, what I do, which is radiation oncology. And uh, once I finished my training, I ended up here. Um, but that's, that's kind of, that, that's where the roots of my mantra is, which is never give up. I almost gave up right at that moment. And, and it was just a, ha a, a, a chance encounter with one of my friends that, that uh, kind of turned, that, that's a pivotal moment right there. It's one of those pivotal moments that changed the course of my life. Um, and so that's why I, I try to tell my kids never to give up. Um, so that's when things started getting hard. And then, you know, and then, like you mentioned, so I have a, my oldest son is autistic and I lost my father unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was smooth sailing for a while and then things started getting hard, uh, really hard, especially, you know, when, when it's affecting your, your children, mm -hmm. it's a whole new different level hard, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not something that you can explain well. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things that only someone who goes through it can truly understand, right? And, and, and that goes with any, any struggle that anyone goes through, right? So when you're struggling with something, you only, um, you tend to listen to the ones who you know went through it because everyone else, uh, they can't really relate. Um, so, so, so yeah, that, um, so things got really difficult with that. But, 
you know, I, I mean, we, we, go through, we go through ups and downs. It's, you know, you go through the low lows. Um, it's either low lows or you're just kind of managing to get by, right, with everything. And so, but I will say this. You know, looking back on, on all that, um, having to deal with all that, you know, it forces you to be a better person, basically, in, in general, right? So, like with every aspect, basically, you know, I have to be a better husband mm. because I have to be there for my wife because it's especially hard. Mm. I have to be a better father, right? I have to be more patient. I have to um, be more interactive. Um, so I have to do that. Uh, if, you know, alternative is I don't do it, and then we all suffer, right? Yeah. So, so it's one of those things where I wish I didn't have to learn it this way, but, um, but and I'm not, I don't believe that God wishes this upon us, mm -hmm. uh, or necessarily that even, you know, that, that it's allowed upon me, or it's, it's not a punishment, but this might have been one of the only ways I can learn what I needed to learn. Mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, you know, you can choose to reject God, or you can choose to draw him closer. And um, so, I mean, that's, that's helped bring, that's helped me be closer to my kids, closer to my family, closer to my God. So it's, it's a blessing, but it's hard. Amen. Is there something else that you'd like to um, share with us? I know you had a verse that you had chosen. Um, yeah, so, um, so as you know, you know, I kind of talked about what, what I've been going through, and it made me think of this verse in Proverbs 16.9. So it talks about how a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. So it reminds me that, you know, we have all our plans. You know, I never planned for this to happen. I never planned for the struggles. I never planned for anything. Um, I thought, you know, there were times in my life I thought I was immune to such things. Uh, but, um, but we have all these plans, but no matter what happens, um, God is, is guiding your steps. And so that's kind of what I've learned through all this. I can see that clearly looking back. As you're going through it, it hurts, so it's hard. It's, your, your vision is clouded. But when you look through it, look back, you can, you can see that. Um, there, there's this movie, uh, it's called uh, The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, and there's this quote in there that mm. I, I always, like, I always repeat it to my wife, and she gets sick of it whenever I, I repeat it. Um, but there's this quote in there that says, um, it says, it'll be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, then it's not yet the end. Mm. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know when God's going to make everything all right. Mm. Um, but, but I do have faith that in the end, it, it will be all right. Amen. I just gotta, you know, just wait one more day. Amen. Until it happens. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Um, I think at this time we'll have the praise team come up. Let's all stand to sing our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou 